Hello and welcome to section 5.2 where today we are going to discuss how to factor trinomials, three term polynomial, polynomials. So uh, let's go back to the map here. Uh, you'll see that we've got the factoring map up here and the first rule of factoring is always to factor out the common stuff. That's the first thing you got to do on every problem we do uh, in this chapter. You're going to want to factor out the common stuff. The next thing you do is you count the number of terms in the polynomial. So uh, if it has a four, if it has four terms, Terms, we learn that you take that route and factor by grouping. Um, if it's got three terms, that's what we're going to talk about today. If it's got three terms, the first thing you need to do is look at the very first number, the leading coefficient. That's the number with the highest power. If the a value is 1, meaning that it's just x squared, then we're going to use this method here. If it's not, then we're going to have to use a different method, and that's what we'll talk about uh, in our next video. This will be in section 5.3 and 5.4. This was section 5.1. And so this part of the map here is section 5.2, where you count the terms. If you have three terms, then you use this method. We'll talk about that right now. Let's uh, take a look at what they look like. OK, so here's an example. Uh, x squared plus 7x equals 10. Notice that uh, this is a three-term polynomial. It's got one, two, three terms. And then also notice that the leading coefficient is 1. The value, the coefficient with the largest power is 1. When that's the situation, that's when we're going to use this rule here, which states that if you want to factor this, you're going to do uh, follow these steps. Step number 1 is find the factors, find the factors of the last term which we call uh, C, that add to B. OK, so basically, this is the C term. If we were to list these out, it would be A, B, and C. We said that A was 1, B is 7, and C is 10. So one thing I like to do is actually take C, the C value, and write out its factors. What numbers go into 10? So there's 10 and 1, and there's 5 and 2. And what you do is create a factor chart. So I've got 10 times 1, that would be 10. 5 times 2, that's 10. These are our factors of 10. And we want to know which set of factors will add to 7. We need to find the factors of C, find the factors of C that would add to 7. Now, if I added 10 and 1 together, that would be 11. If I added 5 and 2 together, that would be 7. And that's what we're looking for. So I would circle those factors, um, because those are the factors I want. The last step then in this process, step number two, is write uh, the factoring out. Would it be parenthesis x plus the factor, close parenthesis, open parenthesis, x plus the factor. So uh, our final answer, that's, that's all you got to do is we're going to write x and x and then write in these factors. I've got a plus 5 and I've got a plus 2. That's the process of factoring trinomials when the first value, uh, the leading coefficient, is 1. All you got to do is find the factors of C that get you B. And you can check your answer. If you're worried about this not being right, well, you can always check by simply uh, distributing it out. Uh, x times x is x squared. And x times 2 is 2x. And 5 times x is 5x. And 5 times 2 is 10. So we just use the distribution method, combine our like terms, and notice that it comes out to what we originally started with, x squared plus 7x plus 10. So uh, this right here is our factored answer. Let's go ahead and look at uh, a couple more just to make sure uh, you're understanding this. But again, the, the process is just finding the factors of the last term that add to the middle term. OK, so here I have two problems, x squared plus x minus 20 and x squared minus 2x minus 15. So if I were going to factor these, again, the first thing you want to do, well, the first thing you always want to do is to check to see if there's anything, any common stuff that factors out. And this doesn't have any common stuff, and this doesn't have any common stuff. So then we count the terms. We've got one, two, three terms, and one, two, three terms. So that brings us down here. 
Then we ask if the a value equals 1 or negative 1. Well, this is just a 1 here and a 1 here. So we're ready to apply uh, this, this method, is to find the factors of c that add to b. So I'm going to go ahead and write the factors out. c in this problem is negative 20, and c in this problem is negative 15. And I want to find the factors that's going to get me that add up to b. I want this to add, this has to add up to b. Now b is 1 in this problem. In this problem, it's negative 2. So I'm just going to start writing out some factors. Let's see, uh, there's 1 and 20. Uh, there's 10 and 2. There's 5 and 4. There's, what? ooh, 5 and 4. Now notice, I'm trying to get these to add up to 1. And I do have a negative 20. And because this is negative, one of these has to be negative. So I could actually make this 4 negative. And when I added 5 minus 4, that gets me a positive 1. Those are our factors right there. And so my final answer would be x plus 5 and x minus 4. You want to list out all of your factors. So let's try this negative 15 here. So let's see, factors of 15. There's 1 and 15. Is that going to add up to negative 2? No. 5 and 3. Ooh, I think I could get 5 and 3 to add up to negative 2 if I made the 5 negative. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Good. These are our factors. And we get x minus 5, x plus 3. Uh, some people always ask, hey, does it matter the order? Um, am I allowed to switch the order here? Can I put x plus 3 here and x minus 5 over here? You bet. Uh, those mean the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter the order uh, that you have the parenthesis in um, in that situation. OK, so that's all really there is. Uh, you've got to find the factors of C that add up to B. Let's give you guys some practice problems. OK, so here are four questions we'd like you to give a try. Um, go ahead and pause the video now and work on factoring these. Again, you're going to take the factors of C, find all the factors, and then find out which ones of those pairs of factors will add up to the middle term. Go ahead and pause the video now and uh, push the play button when you're ready to resume. OK, let's take a look. So you should have written out a, a factor uh, table here. I'm going to factor out 9. So there's 9 and 1. I'm trying to get this to equal 6, though. 9 and 1 does not get me 6. Other factors of 9? Well, 3 and 3 would work. Ooh, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So that is the correct answer. It would be x plus 3 and x plus 3. Yes. OK, good. Um, I'm going to switch colors here to this one. Uh, here I've got negative 12. I'm looking for the factors of negative 12 that get me negative 4. So factors of 12. There's 12 and 1. I don't see getting 4 out of that. There's 4 and 3. I don't think that's going to add to 4. 6 and 2? Wait, I think 6 and 2 will work. I'm trying to get negative 4. So i got to make one of these negative. If I want to get negative 4 when I add it, let's see. If I made it a negative 2, 6 minus 2 would be 4. Nope. we got to make the 6 negative. And so my final answer would be x minus 6 and x plus 2 on this one. And again, you can super distribute these out if you want to make sure you're doing it right. OK. Uh, next one. Factors of 11 that get me 12. OK, so factors of 11. What goes in? Ooh, not much that goes into 11. The only one I can think of is 11 and 1. Huh, and believe it or not, if you added 11 and 1, you get 12. So that would be our factors, x plus 11 and x plus 1. Great. And on question number 4, question number 4, uh, the factors of 6 that add to 9. So factors of 6. There's 6 and 1. Does that add up to 9? No. There's 3 and 3. Does that add up to 9? No. There's, um, huh. So in this situation, if you've listed out all the factors and you cannot get anything to add up to 9, this is an example of non-factorable. Non-factorable. Adorable. So if you were having a hard time on this one, uh, that's probably why. Uh, these, if it doesn't work out, if you cannot find any terms of the last number that add up to the middle number, then it's non-factorable. 
Okay, so up to this point, this is uh, how much of the chart we've learned. We've learned how to take out the common stuff. We learned how to do three-term polynomials, uh, which is what we just did, and four-term polynomials. What we want to do now is give you a few problems um, from each, and not tell you which ones they are, um, and allow you to apply the rules. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, give you four problems, and you guys can try them out. Okay, here are the four problems that we'd like you to try. Go ahead and pause the video and use the factoring map and all the rules we've learned so far in the chapter to see if you can get these done. Good luck! Wow, this purple is a bright color. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to switch to green. This is going to get it to be a very colorful page. I have uh, two terms here. The first thing I'm going to do is factor out all the common stuff. It looks like the common factor would be a 6 and x cubed. So we should be pulling out 6x cubed. And when we pull that out of this, we're just left with x. And when we pull it out of this, we're just left with 2. That should be our answer, 6x cubed uh, times x plus 2. Again, you could divide each of these by 6x cubed to get what's left over. Okay, good. Uh, number two, uh, any common stuff? No, no common stuff to factor out. How many terms? One, two, three, four. Four-term polynomial? That's right, I factor by grouping. That's the chainsaw one. Chainsaw. Okay, good. So, okay, chainsaw it up. On the left, I'm going to take out an x squared, leaving me with x plus 7. Over here on the right, I'm going to take out, let's see, what comes out of 2 and 14? Just 2. So plus 2, and I'm left with x plus 7. Remember, uh, when factoring by grouping, you pull out the common parenthesis, which gets me x plus 7, and then write in the other parenthesis what would be left over. So this x squared on the right, and, or, sorry, on the left, and on the right, this 2. That would be the answer there. Okay, on number 3, any common stuff? No, no, no. Okay, so there's no common stuff. Uh, I've got three-term polynomial. One, two, three, yep. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead then and create a chart of the C, because I need to find the factors of C that add to B. We do that by creating the chart, the number chart. Okay, so factors of 3, I mean of 30. Uh, there's 2 and 15. Does that add to 11? No. Uh, 1 and 30, I'm trying to get them to add to 11. 10 and 3, that doesn't add to 11. 6 and 5, ooh, that does add to 11. So I'm going to use those in my parenthesis. So x plus 6 and x plus 5. Okay, nice. And on number 4, let's take a look. Uh, any common stuff? No common stuff, no common stuff, no common stuff. Okay, so uh, 3 terms, 1, 2, 3 terms, yep. So we're going to go ahead and write out the 7. Factors of 7 that come out to be a negative 8. Factors of 7. The only factors I can think of are 7 and 1. Now I need those to become negative 8. To do that, they would both have to be negative? Yep. And so my answer would be x minus 7, x minus 1. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, let's just do three more just to make sure we're good with this table, and then uh, we'll call it a day. Okay, here are uh, questions number 5, 6, and 7. Go ahead and pause the video. Take out, uh, Just continue right where you left off in your video notebook. Make sure you can get these three problems, and then uh, check your answers when you're uh, by pushing the play button. Good luck. Okay, here we go. Uh, step number one. Factor out all the common stuff. So I've got three terms here. It looks like there's some common stuff. It looks like all of these can be divided by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the 2 out. That leaves me with x squared plus 9x plus 14. Okay, good. Now let's forget about the 2 for now, and let's just work on seeing if we can factor the inside. Uh, I've got 1, 2, 3 terms. So 3 term polynomial. Does the a equal 1? Yes, it does. And I need to find the factors of c that add to b. So c is 14. Factors of 14 that add to 9. Okay, factors of 14. Well, there's 14 and 1. Does that add to 9? No. Uh, there's 2 and 7. Ooh, 2 and 7, those do add to 9. Those are the ones I want to do. So my final answer would be x plus 2 and x plus 7. And again, don't forget to write this 2. The 2 came from the very first step when we factored out all the common stuff. This here would be our answer. 
Okay, number six. Number six, any common stuff? There's a five here, a five here, a five here, but there's no five here, so no common stuff. How many terms? Four-term polynomial. We're going to cut this in half. Four-term polynomials, you always cut in half. What can I take out on the left side? Looks like x squared, leaving me with 5x plus... Ooh, when I take an x squared out of this, so I'm dividing these both by x squared. x squared divided by x squared is 1. Okay, then there's a plus. On the right side, what can I factor out? Uh, looks like I factor out a 5, leaving me with 2x plus 1. And so these parentheses are not equal. Now that probably threw you off. You should have been like, hmm, these parentheses are not equal. So when doing factoring by grouping, if the parentheses are not equal, means one of two things. It means you either did it wrong, which we didn't do it wrong here, or it's non-factorable. This problem's non-factorable because the parentheses are not the same. The parentheses are not the same. Um, so uh, be aware of that when factoring by grouping. These got to be exactly the same. Okay, question number seven. First step, factor out the common stuff. Looks like there is a five in both of those. So I'm going to take out the five, leaving me with x squared plus 4x plus 10. Okay, now uh, this is one, two, three terms, so I find the factors of 10 that add to 4. Factors of 10, uh, 2 and 5, 10 and 1. Any others? Ooh, so this one cannot go any further. We cannot break this parenthesis down. We would say that our final answer is this right here. Now, some people want to often put that that's non-factorable, but it did factor. It did factor. We did have something from the first step, and so uh, we do put the 5 there, and we say, yeah, it factors. It just doesn't factor anymore, so we leave that parenthesis there. Okay, well, hopefully that gives you a good review of all of the topics that we talked about so far in the chapter. We'll continue to revisit the whole picture. Um, we'll, we'll study one strand and then come back and visit the whole picture um, frequently. So, okay, well, good work with that. You can continue on to the lesson. If you need help, make sure to uh, contact the tutor or your teacher. Have a great day.